There's also a section called Mad World. 
much great. 
because, you know, the National Suicide Prevention Hotline is they counsel people who are having those feelings. You know, they tell them what to do. So they advised this friend to contact the sheriff's office. So the friend called the sheriff's office, who then told her to call the Nashville non-emergency number. So according to this friend, quote, I called Nashville's non-emergency line at 10.14 a.m. and was on hold for nearly seven minutes before speaking with someone who said they would send an officer to my home. This officer came to her home at 3.29 p.m. But don't blame this friend or the police or the suicide prevention line or any of those people. The truth is, this unfolded so quickly, I, unless this friend had a crystal ball, there was no way to intervene, in my opinion, okay? Because although she's, she's on the phone with, uh, you know, the, the um, non-emergency number at 1014, this crime has already began by then, okay? All right. Meanwhile, Hale drove up to the school in her Honda Fit, and it is all caught on the security cameras. She arrived at the parking lot at 9.54 a.m., and she had two assault rifles and a handgun. At 10.13, she shot through the glass doors on the side of the building, and then began firing basically indiscriminately, randomly. Calls were made to 911. I'll get to them in a few minutes, but the police arrived at 10.23. So I guess it's about 10 minutes from when she entered the school until the police arrived. And Hale was up on the second floor, and she shot through the glass windows on the second floor, she shot down at the police officers in the parking lot. They suggested that it looked like she had had some kind of training in, uh, you know, how to shoot this rifle. Based on how she was doing it, she was kind of standing to the side of the window and shooting down at them. The police entered the building right away, and they went up to the second floor. It was a total of 14 minutes of her active shooting before she was shot by two officers, and she was confirmed as dead at 10.27 a.m. At the end of all this, aside from Hale being dead, six other innocent people were killed. Three nine-year-olds were killed, as well as three adults, and I'm going to tell you a little something about each one of them right now. Evelyn Dykehouse, quote, with an unwavering faith in the goodness of others, Evelyn made people feel known, seen, but never judged. Her adoring family members agree that she was everyone's safe space. Haley Scruggs was the daughter of the pastor of the church, Chad Scruggs. He described his daughter as such a gift. We are heartbroken. Through tears, we trust that she is in the arms of Jesus who will raise her to life once again. William Kinney, also nine, was a beloved son, brother, nephew, and friend forward to starting baseball season this spring. He was set to play infield and outfield by the Creve Hall Reds. He had an easy grin, dimples, long eyelashes, and went by Will. He was known to friends as a kind boy with an unflappable spirit. Mike Hill, 61 years old, was the school custodian. He had seven children and 14 grandchildren. He was beloved by the faculty and students who filled him with joy for 14 years. Catherine Kuntz, age 60, was the headmistress of the school. She was, quote, devoted to her family, her friends, and especially the children she 
friend Cynthia Peake, age 61. She was a substitute teacher. Quote, Cindy was a pillar of the community and a teacher beloved by all her students. Her favorite roles in life were being a mom to her three children, a wife to her husband, and an educator to students. Now I'd like to tell you a little bit about the 911 calls that were coming in during the attack. They included voices of teachers, school officials, people were whispering in classrooms, closets, bathrooms, offices, and they could hear alarms ringing loudly during these calls. One caller said, quote, all I saw was a man holding an assault rifle shooting through the door. It was, he's currently in the second grade hallway upstairs. Another call came from the lead pastor, Chad Scruggs, whose daughter was ultimately killed. He identified himself and told the operator that he's outside, he's heading to shots. So he wasn't in the building at the time. And he said, I'm getting calls from the inside. So people who were under siege in the building were calling him to tell him what was happening. One woman who hid under a desk in a nursery tells a dispatcher the school which is attached to the Covenant Presbyterian Church sometimes has some staff members carry firearms but does not have dedicated security guards. Quote, we do have a school person or two. I'm not sure who would be packing, whose job it is for security. We don't have security guards, but we have a staff. After the attack, the chief of police, Chief Drake, spoke. And he said that they had found a manifesto and maps of the school, which had details on entry and exit points and surveillance areas. He said that the suspect was, quote, prepared for a confrontation with law enforcement. And he noted that the manifesto, quote, indicates that there was going to be shootings at multiple locations and the school was one of them.
were shot in even if it wasn't glass I don't know you know they could shoot in a window a locked door isn't gonna be enough armed security guards are not enough because we've seen that be a problem in the past mental health treatment I think a lot of people want to say that's what we need I don't think so I'm not saying I'm against mental health Definitely, we should have more mental health treatment available, but that's not going to solve the problem. That's just not enough, I mean. Are you telling me that in countries where they don't have these mass killings, are you telling me that they have better mental health treatment than we have? And that's why they don't have mass killings? I don't think so. This person was 